Hey guys, it's Rick. It's time to dive into May reviews. So we're here with week one reviews, seven movies to talk about. I'm going to cut the small talk. Seven movies to talk about, two physical uh, copies to talk about, and they're the first, first, hello, the first two things that we watched in the month of May. The first was very excited to show this movie to RJ. He had never seen it before. It is probably one of my top five sports movies of all time, and that is Elite of Their Own, starring Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, Lori, Perry, uh, Lori Petty, just uh, such John Lovitz, just such a great sports movie. Um, I think it mixes comedy, drama, and sports so well, uh, where it's likable for so many people. And uh, based loosely based on the true story, obviously there's there's liberties taken, but based on the uh, the real All American Girls baseball league during World War II. Um, like I said, great performances, standouts in my opinion. Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, and Lori Petty is really good as well. Um, R.J. didn't love the movie. He liked it. He enjoyed it. He appreciated it for what it was. Uh, but the movie still holds up so well for me. This is a five-star film for me. Uh, just so, so, so good. So, Elite of Their Own, if you guys have not seen this, please do yourselves a favor. Check this one out. It is such a fun watch and just a really, really good sports movie and a uh, great story. Next up, uh, I was quite excited about this. I've show I showed this in a recent... Um, unboxing video, I'm pretty sure. I, I feel like I've shown it in an unboxing video already. But as soon as I found out this was being released to Blu-ray, had to order it. The DVD had been on my wish list for a few years now, and that is Dead Man on Campus. This being from 2000... Nope. 1998, starring Tom Everett Scott, Mark Paul Gosselaar, uh, also Lachlan... Brecklin, my, Lachlan, Lachlan Monroe, I believe is his name. Poppy Montgomery there as well. Uh, she actually liked my Instagram post about watching this. That was pretty cool. And uh, so this movie, like I said, on my wish list for a while, I found out it was coming to Blu-ray, MOD, and uh, needed to revisit this. She, <laughs> this is a dark comedy that would not get made uh, nowadays. If you don't know the premise, it's basically about two college kids uh, the focus mainly is on Tom Everett Scott here, and he's in, he has a full load, he's, I think he's pre-med, and his roommate, Mark Paul Gosselaar, just wants to party, and, uh, you know, he's doing horrible in school, and they find out about this thing where if your roommate commits suicide, you get all A's, and the movie takes weird turns from there. They basically try to find the craziest person they can to be their roommate, and try to get them to commit suicide so they can get straight A's and stay in school. Like I said, this movie would not get made nowadays, but it did get made, and I watched this probably when I was way too young, probably like 15 years old, 16 years old, and uh, I thought it was funny then, and I think it, it's still funny now. Great soundtrack in the film, and uh, a fun watch that had me laughing out loud. I give it a three and a half out of five. Uh, a, a bit of that is probably in nostalgia, but uh, I enjoy this quite a bit, and Bridget liked it as well, and she had watched it a lot when she was younger, or she had definitely seen it, maybe not a lot. I, I'm putting words in her mouth. So that's it for physical releases. Um, we signed up, I think I've talked about this, for six months of Showtime on Hulu, um, and for the first three months, I didn't use it at all. Bridget was watching Shameless. Uh, she had like the last two seasons plus the new one that just ended to watch. And uh, there was a series on there I really wanted to see about the comedy store, which we did watch. It was fantastic if you're a fan of stand-up comedy. And uh, so we've been trying to watch movies on there. And the first thing, um, well, the third thing in June that we watched on Showtime was a documentary called Belushi, all about John Belushi. Um a lot of the movie was done with phone interviews, um, which was uh, for a book that was being written about John Belushi's wife, because a pro or life, not wife, because a proper biography was never done about John Belushi, um, and it was sad to watch how Belushi was on top. You know, at one point he was like 
the hottest thing on SNL. He had the number one um, movie in America with Animal House. And I believe Blues Brothers album was number one. They had a sold out tour and it just wasn't enough for him. And he was on top for such a short time and, uh, you know, drugs and and other things. Addiction just caught up to him. And the movie was interesting. I was a bit annoyed at the style it was done, but there was enough footage in there where like when they played a phone interview, they were showing pictures, but also doing illustrations, but it wasn't, I would rather watch a documentary if it was people talking where it's like me being interviewed by a guy sitting on the couch and I'm answering. Like I would rather look at that and listen to like a phone recording and then illustrations and pictures, but it worked for this movie. And, uh, I enjoyed the, co- you know, the topic and, um, I give it a three and a half out of five. Like I said, it was pretty heartbreaking, but as a fan of John Belushi, definitely something I was glad to check out. Uh, next, I finally watched the Jesus rolls also on Showtime. So crazy Joe, I'm wearing your shirt. Hopefully you're watching this. I'm going to make sure the Jesus rolls is on that thumbnail so you can hear my thoughts. And, uh, it was dog crap. Uh, I love The Big Lebowski. I own it probably, let's say one, two, three, four, five. I own it at least five times over, hoping to get a sixth version of it if I can get the special edition 4K set uh, with the bowling bag. I have the bowling ball DVD set. I have it on 4K. I have the Digibook. I have two Steelbooks. Love The Big Lebowski. It is a movie that is so funny to me. I grew up obsessed with bowling the movie is not necessarily about bowling it more takes place around bowling alleys but the characters are so funny the movie is so quotable Uh, john goodman and uh, so good this was atrocious um this movie features john Turturro's character from big lebowski the jesus and that is where the connection to big lebowski ends It is a movie about a character from The Big Lebowski. It has nothing to do with what his character does in that movie, which is Bull. Uh, So the movie has a fantastic cast, written and directed by Totoro, Bobby Cannavale, John Hamm, Audrey uh, Tattoo, I believe is her name, Susan Sarandon, Pete Davidson, who I'm a fan of, Christopher Walken, and even more. And the story was just absolute garbage and it i mean the basically the movie has is a coming of age movie uh the the jesus gets out of i don't know what that was the jesus gets out of jail and um basically the movie's about people having sex and stealing cars and it just felt pointless like the movie did not go anywhere i'm getting aggravated talking about it right now to you guys because it just didn't go anywhere. It didn't make sense. It, why did they make this movie? I give it a half star. Crazy Joe, you were absolutely right. We agree on another movie. Terrible. I'm glad I watched it because I can just disregard it. The Big Lebowski is the only movie in that universe that exists to me. So, wow. But next we checked out, I believe... Was everything else I watched? Yeah, everything else was on Showtime. So I've really been trying to get my money's worth out of the Showtime deal. Like I said, $30 for six months. Really good deal. Five bucks a month. I watched the series. Bridget finished Shameless. I watched five movies the first week of June. I still have another month. There's a few other things I really want to check out before uh, I don't have access. The next title uh, was a movie that's been on my radar for a while. Only got a DVD release, never a Blu-ray release, so I put off buying it. And it's a movie called Hot Summer Nights, starring Timothy Chalamet, who you guys know I'm a big fan of. It's an A24 film. Uh, it is, um, it's basically a coming-of-age movie about a kid who becomes a drug dealer by chance. Um, Timothy Chalamet goes away, I believe, to live with his aunt been a while it's been a month since i watched it. he goes away to live with his aunt and it's this town where he's kind of like he's out of place he works at a convenience store 
the local drug dealer comes in and he basically starts selling drugs and the drug the drug dealings get bigger and bigger and he wants to make more and more money um the film features an awesome soundtrack uh the movie takes place in 1991 but the movie gives off serious 80s vibes throughout like like i don't even think 1991 was essential to the plot but this felt very 80s but they make sure you know that it was it took place in 1991 um supposedly based on a true story i personally find that a bit hard to believe honestly um but it's a movie about greed and a movie about taking life in a certain direction and you'll it'll usually end up the same way when you take life in that direction but i enjoyed it the movie looked really good it's really a shame it didn't get a blu-ray release obviously on showtime it was in hd but never got a physical blu-ray so i'm not going to get a dvd of it i if it got a blu-ray release i would i would get the blu-ray of it um but good performances timothy chalamet crushes it He's been so good in so much of what I've seen him in. So I recommend Hot Summer Nights. I give it a three and a half out of five. Definitely check it out if you come across it. Uh, next up was another documentary about a filmmaker. And that is De Palma, which was watched on Showtime. I feel like my camera is blurry. Maybe it's my eyes. It's been a long week, guys. So De Palma, uh, so it's about Brian De Palma. So I'll start off the review by mentioning that I've only seen a handful of Brian De Palma's movies. Um, the standouts would be like Scarface, Carrie, Mission Impossible, um, The Untouchables, and a few others. But uh, this documentary is kind of interesting because it basically takes him and he talks about briefly about how he got started in film, but then kind of goes through his experiences on each movie and what they mean in his career. And how that affected his his career, you know, ahead and whatnot. Um, so it talks about his short films up through, I believe, 2007. That's where it goes up to. Um, Brian De Palma comes off as very self-indulgent in this movie. Uh, very unlikable, in my opinion. And uh, from what I've seen, out of the movies I've seen of his, I think he's an overrated filmmaker. But I've also seen... A small fraction of his filmography. <clears throat> There's movies that um, through watching this documentary I'm more intrigued to check out like Blowout with John Travolta and The Bonfire of the Vanities which is on my Tom Hanks to watch list. Um, it was interesting but at the end of the runtime I was sick of hearing Brian De Palma talk about himself and and how great it was uh, how great he was and the other thing I find interesting is that nobody else was interviewed for this movie so I wonder what Brian De Palma is like to work with that nobody else was talked to in this movie it just seems weird like if he's such a you know special director wouldn't they have a bunch of people who wanted to get interviewed about it but I give it a three out of five it was another a24 film which is a bit interesting that they did a documentary um, but the last movie, we're going to get into the seventh movie, and then I'm calling it a night. I'm going to actually watch a movie after this, was Swor Sword of Trust, Sword of Trust, uh, which was on Showtime. I wanted to check it out based on the cast. The two leads, or two of the leads are Mark Marin and Jillian Bell. Um, so the movie's about a pawn shop owner, Mark Marin, and uh, a couple that inherits a rare Civil War relic. And it's supposed to be a comedy and it just felt like it was a weird sketch play thing. Like these, these weird guys come to the pawn shop and try to rob the pawn shop to get this relic. And then this guy wants to buy the relic and they get put in the back of a truck. It, the movie is pretty pointless. Um, it was really just something to have on and I was honestly I was half paying attention to it in parts because it was so pointless I give it a one out of five it was it was just pretty tough to sit through and not something I'd recommend but that is it guys that is everything I watched the first week of May the paper is done I am going to relax the rest of the night I rip this up tear it up I want to rip it and uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm losing my mind. Uh, you're reaping all the benefits. 
Um, so thank you guys for watching. As always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about my reviews. Let me know what you've been checking out and watching yourselves. Also, check out the description box down below where you can find links to my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, my letterbox where I rate and review all the movies I watch, Blu-ray.com profile, Amazon wishlist, uh, eBay store, P.O. box, email address, uh, links to the Movie Hoarders trailer, which is a documentary I'm going to be a part of, plus links to where you can pre-order Movie Hoarders from VHS to DVD and beyond. Coming soon, guys. Comes out, today's June 30, comes out in a month. I cannot wait for it to come out. I'm so excited to check it out, but that is it, guys. So, as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, who down the movie, baby? That was weird. It was like Adam Sandler. I don't know. Later, guys.